guys, it's your pro gamer short devil with some more amazing tips that can get you on my level of gaming. Yeah, we're talking about from being a noob to becoming an ultimate pro gamer, just like me. Okay, okay, enough of that fake version of me. I'm no pro gamer. In fact, I like to do dumb things in this game, like blocking with a greatsword, which totally didn't trigger people in that video. As I said multiple times on this channel, I'm a filthy casual gamer that just knows how to play every weapon in the game. But then I thought to myself, how did I get good at the game? I posted a lot of videos and tips and guides for world, but I've never actually talked about how I got good. So without further ado, let's talk about how I got from a total noob that was about to uninstall the game, to being able to solo the majority of every monster here. Just so you can get better at the game yourself. The first thing that I struggled with was the controls. I feel like every person who has touched this game for the first time almost threw their controller at their screen. Or maybe that was just me. Bro, this game is clunky. Out of all the games I've played, I have never struggled with the controls of a game. To solve this problem for my stupid brain, I broke down the controls to two simple things, which is combat and non-combat mode. Combat mode is when you have your weapon unsheathed, meaning that most of the buttons change so that you can attack with your weapon, obviously. Non-combat mode is when you have your weapon sheathed and you can use your items and do that dodge that will forever save your life throughout every Monster Hunter game that you will now continue to play for the rest of your life because you got better at the game. Rest in peace your funds for the upcoming future by the way. Having those two things in mind actually helped with getting slightly better at the game rather than thinking about I can only use items when I'm not holding my weapon but I can only block attacks with my weapon out but my weapon doesn't have a shield but I need to heal but okay you get the gist. I also tend to manually sheath my weapon rather than selecting an item I want to use straight away. I know that when you use an item your character sheaths the weapon and then uses the item. I didn't really like that because it feels slow to use an item in that way. Plus manually sheathing the weapon away gives me a chance to run away first to make some distance to use the item rather than having the character slowly walk away while using an item. Also, I'm no fan of being slow, even though I can use the slow weapons in the game. Talking about using items, they were a pain to use. At first, I tried using the item bar, but I soon realized most of the reason why I felt clunky was because of this stupid bar. Navigating this bar while fighting a monster is straight up telling the monster to please, in my life, I was struggling to figure out whether I should use the directional buttons to navigate it or just hold that button and press these buttons to scroll through my items. In the end, I gave up and decided to use the item wheel more than the bar. The bar would still be used, but it would be set on an equipment or some other item that couldn't fit on the single wheel. I know I can flip between different item wheel options, but that's too complicated for my single brain cell on top of fighting a monster. Doing this just makes it simple for me to use items that I really need on the fly. It kind of shortens my item bar to one or two items because the rest is on the wheel. I do sometimes flip through the bar, but it's extremely rare that I do. Another thing that I refuse to do is locking onto monsters. From other hack and slashes like Devil May Cry, I would normally lock onto monsters because I need to track their movement and I don't need to adjust my camera all the time. This should also work with Monster Hunter, right? Fighting these big boys and keeping track of their movements is a perfect call to lock on to your target, right? For some reason, I found out it's better to not lock on. I feel more free to direct my attacks when I'm not locking on. And I just don't like how the camera moves with the target. Instead of fighting the monster, I'm just fighting the camera. So I just don't lock on. I do wonder if people actually lock on to the target. All right, with the controls out of the way, let's get into the thick of it and talk about the next thing I needed to do to get better, which is weapon knowledge. Obviously, you gotta use weapons to defeat these guys, but learning about them is extremely vital to playing the game as a whole. At the start, I didn't pay any attention to the weapons and jumped straight into combat with whatever they gave you. As I said in the video, I chose the greatsword thinking that it was the starter weapon, and boy, was that a mistake? Starting the game with a slow, heavy and clunky weapon 
spelled disaster for me on top of battling with the controls of the game. After giving up on using the greatsword, I would test out using the other weapons and look at weapon tutorials. Unless you have time in the training area, watching weapon tutorials on YouTube is really helpful because this game doesn't explain the weapons or weapon combos really well. Each of these weapons are unique and what I've come to learn about these weapons is that each of them have some type of goal in mind when used against monsters. Take the long sword as an example. The goal of this weapon is to reach the weapon's highest level so that you can inflict the highest possible damage especially when you use the weapon's strongest attack. Or how about a weapon with barely a mechanic like the hammer? The goal of a hammer user is to knock out the monster and get that juicy damage while they're down. Learn how a weapon works and you'll be fine throughout the whole game. It also helps with being less clunky with the controls because you learn about specific attacks to use rather than guessing what happens after pressing the attack button again. Since I was trying out different weapons after giving up on the greatsword, I didn't realize it was actually a good idea to learn multiple weapons. Being able to use a different weapon against a monster helps because some monsters can be easily defeated by using a weapon that is more suited against it. Fighting Legiano with a lance is a painful experience, unless you can handle being patient enough to deal with it constantly flying, whereas using an insect glaive is a breeze in the park, but I love being able to fly as well. You can totally use one weapon throughout the whole game, but if you want a more smooth experience, I'd say use more than one weapon. Although the downside of using more than one weapon is that you might have to spend more time farming for materials to build armor sets for that weapon. The next thing that I improved on is combat knowledge. I feel like not a lot of people talk about this, but analyzing how a monster moves can help with predicting their next attack. Some monster attacks can be pretty brutal and can easily kill you depending on how trash you are at the game. Uh, I, I mean uh, how trash your gear is. Learning how they move can also help with finding the right time to attack the monster. Because if you blindly start swinging your weapon thinking that you stagger it somehow, you might as well be digging a hole to lay your dead ass in. Now I don't know when this happened to me, but I got used to circling around a monster. I do this to avoid getting hit on top of looking at a monster's attacks. You could say that I'm getting the download on this guy. I'm simply understanding how they attack and where I can punish it. I think I used to just swing at the monster without thinking. I used to have that one brain cell, huh? However, depending on the weapon you're holding, you might not be able to circle around the monster. Like, there's no way I'm gonna be moving around with the gun locks. So it's totally fine to block attacks or sheath your weapon away to find an opportunity for an attack. Also, Dodging in here is more like a move to distance or reposition yourself from the monster. You can use it to dodge attacks, but your invincibility frames or iframes are really small unless you have that skill on to increase your iframes, but even then I barely use it to dodge into monsters attacks. This isn't Dark Souls or Elden Ring where the iframes are kind of generous. Once I found the opportunity to start the attack, I used to hit any part of the monster because why not i'm dealing damage right well it's fine but attacking specific parts of a monster can help in the long run most of my time playing monster hunter always involve slicing off their tail this actually helps with both gaining materials from the monster and reducing their attack range because no tail means no more tail swing attack yeah it sucks to be you rapidos sadly this doesn't apply to all monsters. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Legiana. Ooh, how I wish to cut off your tail. But attacking the wings instead, to the brakes, will reduce the amount of times it starts to fly around. Also, if you have read the Hunter Guidebook, it will tell you that there are parts of a monster that will be weak to a specific weapon. Basically, more damage to the monster. Throughout my multiple attempts of blindly swinging at the monster, hoping for a stagger, I learned that it's much better to not go for full blown combos. Some combos or even attacks have a high commitment to do them. What this means is that some attacks have a long animation and you don't want to be caught doing them. That's why it's best to just do attacks that don't have a high commitment. Small combos or simple jabs at the monster are much better than pulling off a long combo with the chance of you getting clapped by the monster. Only when the monster gets stunned, tired or knocked down in some way, that's when you can start throwing hands. 
unless you've gotten so proficient at using your weapon, you can just combo for days without the fear of getting hurt doing them. Finally, the last important thing that I needed to do to get better at this game was to understand how armor works. When I started, I thought that armor must work in the same way as any other game, which is to keep on upgrading to the next tier of armor. While that is somewhat true, with the rarity of the armor gives better defense, the actual importance of armor is the skill that it provides. Boy, I don't even remember what skills I had with all the random armor pieces I slept on because I just wanted higher defense. Skills really help out with improving your overall gameplay experience, whether that be increasing your damage output or resistant elemental blights. Using the right skills will help you all the way through to the end of the game. My dumbass only slapped on the defense charm throughout my board playthrough. I totally forgot that there's other charms that can give you more skills. If I could replay the game, I would have experimented a bit more with my charms. At least I played with all kinds of armor builds, despite always having defense charm on most of my builds. Being able to create various armor builds really helps with defeating monsters. Sometimes, whenever I was really pissed off against one monster, I would create a build with the sole purpose of defeating it. I would slap on element or blight resistance skills along with other skills that would increase my damage against them along with a weapon that is more suited to use against them. Otherwise, I would mainly create armor builds that use skills that would work with the weapon that I'm using. Stuff like Stamina Surge for the Jewel Blades works absolute wonders because that stamina drain be brutal. I actually didn't look up any guides on armor building because I think I remember my friend telling me to put this on since it gave me this skill or that skill. I just looked at each skill and I thought, maybe this would help out. I feel like other people would look up armor guides or find the perfect armor build, but I just experimented. Plus, with how the game randomizes the decorations you obtain, I think it's not possible to completely copy someone's armor build. I would also say that looking at each armor skill kind of reminds me of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and taking a look at each monster effect. If you've not played Yu-Gi-Oh!, let's just say reading monster effects is almost the same as reading an essay, just to explain an effect. It's amazing how much they can fit in that tiny box. So that's how I got good at the game, from the clunky controls to learning the other mechanics in the game, analyzing the monster movements, using different weapons, the mechanics, creating armor builds, all of that just to eventually get my ass destroyed by Fatalis and get his glorious gear, which is what I call the end of the game. The armor set lets you build every build you want, Truly a hunter's dream come true. I would actually love to know how anyone else got better at the game. So drop it in the comments below. Anyways, if you found this video useful in some way, be sure to give it a like. And I would normally say subscribe to the channel, but I'm mostly waiting on the next Monster Hunter game. So maybe subscribe for that. Anyways, I will see you guys later.